Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here, and in this video I want to show you my latest project. Well, by this time it's actually uh, not the latest project anymore, but or I won't mention my latest project because it's, I'm kind of ashamed of it. <laughs> Whatever. So this project is um, Mr. Carlson's Super Probe. Not so long ago, Paul has uploaded a video about a circuit that he designed and that circuit attracted my interest to itself because um, it, it was a non-contact probe which will allow you to sniff um, audio signal as well as RF stuff kind of handy uh, with it you can have you can pinpoint where the noise in your circuit is where the audio gets uh, where the audio just loses in the circuit in a path. So without further ado, let, I'm gonna show you here my implementation. For the circuit and schematic you know in the perfect explanations without babble you can go to his video, link is in description. So he used an ICO probe but I don't have any probe like that. So I used this. What is this you might ask? Well, that's an aluminum cannon from a multi-section electrolytic capacitor. And here it is. Inside, on the back side, you can see this shiny piece. It's a copper clad, double-sided copper clad that I tinned to look the same, approximately the same color as the actual pack case itself. Here you can see the shielded cable coming out. Here you can see the switch, which chooses between audio no mode and noise mode. Here is the LED. Inside it looks like this. All stuff on this board, except few capacitors, are a through hole. Only few decoupling caps are surface mount which you can see here. Okay, let's move on to the amplifier. Okay, inside it looks like this. This was an old computer speaker, low powered one, but suits my need just fine. Here is a 4 ohm 2 watt speaker, well, 2 watts supposedly. I doubt that it's gonna be producing clean sound if you're gonna push 2 watts into it. Here you can see the battery pack. And here you can see the board which I engineered, which I laid out in order to, uh, for the pots, for the two pots and the earphone jack and the LED to fit into existing holes. But you can see they do. And uh, yeah, so here you can see one transistor in the middle of the screen now. That's another preamplifier which feeds signal, preamplified signal into this chip amp, which is, as you can see, CM8600C, which is a um, pretty much the same chip as Paul used, but it's a Chinese version. Here you can see I put a nice text here. Okay. So we pretty much saw everything. One trick though is Paul used a half watt potentiometer and he used, uh, and since the circuit, the actual probe draws a little current, he used uh, the actual pot as a div voltage divider and acquired the variable voltage for the probe that way. But I don't have space for a half watt pot here. I used uh, just this like 0.1 watt potentiometer and I've used a little circuit with that transistor which you can see in the middle of the screen. It's a 2NC906. And circuit for that, what I'm, and schematic, I'm gonna show you now. So that's a schematic, as you can see, this is so-called VBE multiplier, and it's a circuit which essentially multiplies the basimeter volt uh, junction drop 
of the transistor you are using, the minimum voltage that it can drop on itself across its emitter collector is equal to the drop base emitter. And it can be many times more than that. That's what you set with this potential with this stream with this potentiometer. If you move the wiper here, the circuit will drop all the ray all the voltage it can because you'll essentially pull the base to the emitter, thus you will turn the transistor completely off and you will have zero volts here, no current flow. If you put it here, that's why I have a stop resistor here, so I won't so excessive current won't be flown out of base and destroy the transistor. Okay, let me show you it's working. By the way, you might have wondered why the hell I have a switch next to the jack. And that's why. See? Because the, it turns on automatically when I push the connector all the way in. Okay. So here, the way I do, the way you should do it, is you knock the volume up a little bit and turn on the power until you can hear a hiss. There we go. Now, Paul used a little clip that you can hook to the, the actual ground of this probe to the ground of the circuit you are sniffing, but this scene is so sensitive I don't have to do that. But not, it will still pick up the signal, but it will as well pick up a lot of noise because you are effectively measuring floating circuit with to using a floating probe to measure a floating circuit. But I can uh, just uh, take that noise out by just holding the probe like this and touching the ground of the circuit with my other finger. And hopefully you can hear it, that it hums. Okay, watch this. See? Noise goes out. And if I approach the tip of the probe to the audio output. Let me try to put it closer so you can be close to the speaker and you can see that um, when I approach with the probe. Okay. I guess you see now. See, I'm not even touching the wire. Now I am, but I'm, I'm insulated still. And if I put it extremely floating, like that, see? I did it. I'm not connected to the ground even. You can still make out the audio. Okay, let me connect the ground and that will get rid of the buzz. Okay, ground clip connected. Now you can Here's the audio quite clearly. As you can see, I am just putting the probe right here. Let me try to adjust it a little bit. Okay, you definitely can hear it now, don't you? Can't ya? Yeah, yes, you are hearing the audio. And look where the sound comes from. Not from this speaker. The speaker is off. Now it's on, and you can hear the audio. Oh, 
Okay, enough. Because I'm gonna just get ads from the copyright holder. Thanks for watching. See ya.